we go. Last smoky journey of this little beetle. It normally takes weeks to convert a classic car to electric. Here at Electric Classic Cars, we're going to set ourselves a challenge. Can we convert this Volkswagen Beetle from petrol to electric in a day? It'll be interesting to find out if it can be done, but we're all willing, we're all ready to give it a go. We're going to make it a flipper that flips up the rear number plate and have the charge socket underneath the rear number plate, which is what Tony's cracking on with at the moment. Right, five minutes, engine's going to come out, guys, so we're going to get on left. Pete? Yes. Can you get the air filter off? Yeah, there we go, it's gone. All right, going up. So we've got one on the top of the start motor, one at the side of the start motor. Yeah, there's one up there as well. Take them out, the engine's going to drop, so what we'll have to do is pump up the pallet. Pump up. And then uh, we'll get underneath it. One will have to be this side, uh, over the other side. Let's get it down and get the pallet truck up. It's building the car in a day. There could be problems. I do know this, the electricians will have a really busy day, that's for sure. It's always a crazy idea when I go, hey guys, I've got a really good idea. One smoking pipe. OK, Pete, give it a pull this way, go down a bit. That's tight. It's catching here again. Bring it your way a bit, down, keep going. OK, so if we grab onto the exhaust... <laughs> yeah, and pull the exhaust... Yeah. Yeah, man, we got it. Woohoo! Engine out. Once that petrol engine is out, it's time to get the electric motor in. Hopefully, we'll have it done by the end of today. Time to put the motor in. Here she comes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, good. Keep going. It should be able to go in now. No? No. No. Can you push up from the back here, Neil? Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's now terminals are now against the back of the body. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, take it back out for a minute then. We can't come in from the top, it'll just be a right. similar All problem. Right. First major problem, the electric motor does not want to fit. The clutch is fouling the bell housing. So essentially as soon as the motor goes on, the motor can't turn. So we've got to try and figure out what's going on there. The, the front gearbox mount, if we can take that off. No, yeah. no you can't take... Yeah, no. It bolts it straight on, doesn't it? It bolts from the inside of the bell housing. So. They put a wrong year rear balance on, which makes it really tight yeah. here. So you can't just undo them and drop the lock? No. Well, it's not even on the main bolt there. And there's no way that this can get cleared here. There's a bit of metal just underneath here. We're just going to clearance. It'll give us a little bit uh, more movement. It's only like millimetres we're talking about, but it's so, so tight here. So we'll just give that a little bit of a tickle with a grinder, and that should give us enough. Yeah. Equal there now. Yeah, yeah close. There. there you go. I need to pry that gearbox. Is that? Yeah, that should go in there now. Yes. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Thank Christ for that. Right, let's get a bolt in and let's check clearance on the wheels, etc. The good news is the motor's in. Essentially, it was an early gearbox that was in there that was fouling the clutch. We've lost about two, maybe even three hours on this. I think it's still possible to get this done in a day, but the pressure's really on us now to try and catch up. It's now half past two. We've got the battery box in at the front, the motor in, still loads to do. It hasn't been a smooth conversion, that's for sure. It's gonna be very tight. You mind the paint? No, 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 you need to come in. You need to go in like this. Hold your hand on the corner. That's it, you got it. Like that. Okay. Put the uh, number plate up. Yeah. Number plate's not in the way. Go on, back down again. 
Yep, cool, that's fine. Needs all checking first before anything gets plugged in, just in case I've decided to put it in the wrong thing. So we do a final check before we plug anything in, just for safety. Because if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. So a charger, it's just like a phone charger at home for your phone. It's basically what charges the battery up on the car. We are now getting the rear battery box mounts all drilled and should have that in, in the next half an hour. The rear battery box is a little bit more difficult than the front to get in because essentially we've got to feed it into the car. One, two, three. Yep, stop. And then feed it up onto the rear luggage area. Get your leg in the tunnel. Yeah, I'm, gonna be, I'm good, mate. I'm good. And don't forget, it's about an 85, 90 kilos of weight. Right. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. I'm not going to do it. The big lads are coming in to do that. Can you see the hole, can you? Yeah. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Right, they can wiggle that now. Yeah. It's fine, it's done. Eat your penguin. The motor's in and the battery's in, but everything's got to be connected up yet, so there's a whole load of wiring we've got to do. You ready for this, Mark? Oh, I'm ready for anything, mate. Yeah, whatever. Grab that side, then. Mind the paint up top. We've got to just get everything spot on and right, because if you make one mistake with the wiring, bad things can happen. In a normal petrol car, for instance, you've got a 12-volt battery, but with electric cars, these batteries can give you up to 800 amps, so you really got to treat them with respect. So the pressure's on the electrical guys now to get this finished. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit of a late one, but we always knew that, really, when we started. But in with a chance of finishing. So the ignition's on, yeah? Yeah. You should be able to program that. Yeah, just connecting now. So we've got 122 volts in the system, which is good. So we're checking all the control systems, the safety systems, and then the last thing you do is turn the big isolator on. Here, yeah. and we should have 122 volts. Cool. Perfect. OK. So, we're all ready to uh, basically do a switch on. OK, we've done all our safety checks, so we should be OK. But there's always a little bit of nervousness when you turn that key on for the first time. Ready when you are, Mark? Yeah, turn ignition on. Going on? Yeah. So at the moment, I'm trying to uh, configure the motor. So I've had to do a firmware update on the controller because it, was, it had an old version in it. Back on. Hey, I heard a contact. Uh... Yeah. Fall down. All the way down. All the way off. OK. Can you just put your foot on the throttle again, please? Foot on the throttle. All the way down. Down, yeah. All the way up. Permission failed. Right. Additional offset. We can just manually put it in, can't we? It's, it's on the motor. It's 120 degrees, isn't it? Clockwise, it's 165. Counterclockwise, it's 74. 74. You're going to try a commission sensor with it freshly connected? Yeah. OK. Commission fails. It's not even trying. Bit of an 11th hour drama. We've upgraded the firmware in the controller. We've programmed the controller. The last thing we've got to do is commission the sensor in the motor. And for some reason, the controller doesn't want to do it. Stopping. Brake throttle. Brake throttle. Go, go to the maps. We've done this 100 times before. I need to give the supplier a ring in America. It's really late here, but luckily in the States, it's mid-afternoon. So I'm going to give him a quick call now and see what he thinks. Hey, Hunter, it's Richard, mate. How's it going? OK. So back into throttle, yeah? So configure, traction, throttle. Yeah, OK, M map is 1,300 millivolts, and the first point on the curve is 1,480, so it's uh, a good way off. Oh, hang on, we've got, a, we've got a green thumbs up now. We've done that like three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, a, we've got uh, in that case, then, let me go to uh, configure sensor. Yeah! <laughs> Come on! That's all we want to hear. 
It's been a long day. I think we've sorted out the controller now. For some reason, it's just magically started working. I think we're ready to go. All right. I'm really excited. A little bit tired, but definitely excited to see if this thing rolls. Reverse. Converted in a day. It's 11 o'clock. We've got a beetle converted in a day. I'm very happy, I'm very tired, but I'm going to sleep tonight with a smile on my face. We've electrified this beetle, it still feels like a beetle. I mean, the only thing that's changed, obviously, is it's got more power, it's easier to drive, and there's no noise coming from that engine or smell of the exhaust, which is no bad thing, really. Driving this electric beetle as well is so easy compared to driving it when it's petrol. So this car has 25 kilowatt hours of battery pack, which is probably going to be good for around about 80, 90 mile range, probably more if you drive it really efficiently. The motor in it is about 120 horsepower, which is plenty compared to the original 40 horsepower engine that was in it. It could definitely keep up with modern traffic without a question of a doubt. It's also got regen, so going down this hill now, I'm putting energy back into the battery as well, which gives it a little bit more range. The handling of an electric beetle is much better as well because we've moved the weight distribution a little bit further forward, which is no bad thing in a beetle because usually all the weight is in the back, which makes the handling a little bit questionable. But now on these twisty roads here in Wales, this is actually really nice and the handling is actually quite impressive. The other benefits of having an electric classic is there's zero emissions going out that tailpipe. And if you're with an electricity supplier like Octopus Energy, which gets their electricity from renewable supplies, even when you charge it up, that energy is coming from wind and solar. And having Octopus Energy as an energy supplier means that you can feel a little bit more comfortable about topping it up with that electricity at night time. The winner of this Beetle is actually going to be able to charge for free a home with an Optimus Energy for a whole year. I think that's awesome. Can, not only are you going to own a classic electric Beetle like this, but you can actually drive it around for free for a whole year. If you've taken a classic car that's already been built a long time ago and its carbon footprint is already there, and we've taken a Tesla and recycled its batteries. So putting those two together makes a perfectly green solution for uh, repurposing the classic car. I'm really enjoying driving this. It just puts a smile on your face. Thanks to Octopus Energy, we at Electric Classic Cars have been able to give this beautiful Beetle a new lease of life. <laughs>